take two, Newton's third law. All right, guys. Sorry about that. Um, you guys probably aren't aware, but I started this recording and realized that not all of the papers I had printed um, printed in time because my printer ran out of paper. So some of the papers I hold up are yellow and some of them are white. Um, anyway, our last section of chapter 12 is on Newton's third law. And the first question that you're asked in your notes is, what happens when an object exerts a force on another object? Well, the simple answer is that when an object exerts a force on, on another object, the second object exerts a force equal in size and opposite in direction. This is called Newton's third law. For example, your book um, has an action force, it pushes down on the table, and the reaction that is equal in size but opposite in direction is the table pushing back on your book. Another example is uh, if you're playing tug of war with your dog, or this little boy who's playing tug of war with your dog, so um, the force of the boy pulling on the um, toy is equal but opposite to the force of the dog pulling on the boy. Okay. Um, another example that's simple and uh, for a lot of you guys, you like longboarding. Um, you can see that the action is this person, uh, this child is, or kid, or teenager, or adult even, I don't know. Anyway, this person is um, pushing down on the floor with their foot, and the floor is reacting. Um, the ground is pushing back on the person. Okay? Um, for those of you who play basketball, um, the action is your hand pushes the ball, exerts a force on the ball. Well, the ball actually exerts a force uh, equal in size but opposite in direction on your hand. It's just that you're a lot stronger, the ball is pretty light, so the ball moves a lot more than your hand does from that equal but opposite force. Which is why if you were to throw that ball in space, you would go flying backwards because there would still be a force exerted on you from that ball. Uh, another example, for those of you who might like boxing, okay, uh, let's see here. So, um, action is fist to the jaw, reaction is jaw exert, exerting a force on the fist. Or, for those of you who just like sitting at home on a nice summer day, um, the action is the fan blowing wind on you, and the reaction is the force of the air on the fan. Hopefully you can see that all right. Okay. Um, so forces always occur in pairs, and that's part of Newton's third law that the forces occur in pairs for every action force there is an equal and opposite reaction. So in that blank on your notes, for every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Following along, your notes say, forces in a force pair do not act on the same object. Equal forces don't always have equal effects. And this is where we come to the basketball, okay? Even though um, your hand has the equal force on the basketball as the basketball has on your hand, you don't go flying backwards, but the basketball might be launched across the whole gym. It's the same with Earth and any object that falls to the Earth. Um, the action force of Earth pulling on an object and causing it to fall is a lot more obvious than the action force of that object pulling on the Earth. Because the Earth is so much bigger, we don't notice the Earth move in that example. So this brings us to our second question, which says, How do you calculate the momentum of an object? How do you calculate the momentum of an object? So, for movement along a straight line, momentum is calculated by multiplying an object's mass and its velocity, 
or P equals M times B. We represent momentum with a letter P. Because M is already taken for mass, and MI is taken for miles, and P was just the easiest way to represent momentum. P equals MV. So, momentum is a quantity that's defined as the product, product of the mass and velocity of an object. SI units for momentum are kilograms times meters per second. Kilogram times meter per second. Or kg times m slash s. Now, momentum and velocity are always in the same direction. So, momentum increases as mass and velocity increases. Um, trains have a lot of momentum behind them, especially when they're moving quickly because the train has a lot of mass, and when it's moving fast, momentum's in the same direction as velocity. Um, force is related to a change in momentum, so as the period of time of the momentum's change becomes longer, the force needed to cause this change in momentum becomes smaller. Um, let's do a math skills for this one. Sorry, I gotta switch around my yellow papers. It says, calculate the momentum of a 6.0 kilogram bowling ball moving at 10 meters per second down the alley toward the pin. So, first, let's list our given and unknown. So, given slash unknown. And according to this, I know my mass is 6.0 kilograms, and I also know my velocity is 10.0 meters per second toward pin. The equation, as we just talked about, um, is P equals mv. And when we plug in our numbers, P equals 6.0 kilogram times 10.0 meters per second equals, what did you guys get? I got 60. Okay, 60 kilograms meters per second towards the pin. Alright, let's move on to the last part of the notes. The last part of the notes uh, asks the question, what is the total momentum after objects collide? What is the total momentum after objects collide? And the answer is that the total momentum of two objects after a collision is the same as it was before the collision. So in other words, the total amount of momentum in an isolated system, so where there's no friction or air resistance or anything like that, the total amount of momentum is conserved. And the example for this is Newton's cradle. The example is Newton's cradle. This is a, a device where you pull a ball on one end and let it go. The force travels through the balls. Um, the ball on the other side comes out. The force travels through the balls. The ball on the other side comes out, travels through the balls. And uh, momentum is conserved in this way. So if there was no friction rattling between these uh, balls on Newton's cradle, it would just keep going out and out and out and out, and momentum would be conserved traveling through. Okay? And this is also um, called the law of conservation of momentum, which I just realized was a blank in your notes. So if you guys are like, oh no, where's this last blank before the example? It's law of conservation of momentum. 
And my final example of law of conservation of momentum is this picture, which happens to be one of my favorites. Um, why science teachers are never asked to, I hope you can see this, why science teachers are never asked to supervise recess. Because he's making a useless cradle out of all those kids on the swing. Anyway, I hope that made sense and I hope you were able to hear everything that was going on and I will see you in class.